Okay, as I promised last time, uh, I'm going to plant up and prepare this bed, much akin to that one, slightly different but very similarly. Um, this bed is just over four feet, oh, I'd say probably closer to five feet wide. So what I'll do is I'll do a series of plantings down the centre, so you get a row down the centre and then a row this side and a row that side. It'll be around 18 inches long, 18 inches between between plants that way and 15 inches between rows. Um, I always start from the centre and work out because typically these, these big plants get quite big so you don't, if you have them too close to the edge they'll flop out or they'll, they'll touch the sides of the, the mesh and it won't work correctly. Um, cheap and easy measuring guide. Get yourself a stick, cut it to length and use that for measuring out your holes. Um, I'll bring you back once it's planted up and I'll start to start to prepare it for actually covering it. Okay, there we go. That's uh, that's the first stage which is planting uh, done. It's um, primarily a few cauliflower and some calabrese down the centre and down one side and then the rest is a variety of cabbages. Uh, the exceptions will be these three that you can see here that don't look like the others. These are Taunton, Dale, uh, Taunton Dean Kale cuttings kindly gifted to me by the uh, inimitable Liz Zorab. Um I'll bring you back in a moment um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut some hoops not in that colour but that sort of principle and place them down the, the length of the run um, and I'll bring you back uh, once I've done that. Okay um, you see I've got the hoops in they're quite high um, the height of the hoops really needs to accommodate for what you're growing so Something like that kind of height, which was a little bit over the top for this one. This particular bed is ideal for sprouts. Um, what you also notice is that a lot of people will either just throw a cover over that as it is, or just put a top bar, uh, sort of just between the two. I don't like that. I think it's too. Uh, it just falls apart and wobbles, wobbles too much, particularly if you get high winds. Um, so I do two. One on this side, about two thir a third of the way up one on the other side about a third of the way up so you've got support on every third um, I'll do that um, this is just using some straight PVC pipe I've got knocking around you could use bamboo canes anything you like really but I'll um, I'll bring you back once I've uh, once I've done the next stage and here we go with the uh, supports on as you'll notice I do this it's a relatively rigid structure isn't going to get caught by the wind and knocked around. Um, that one will be replaced. They didn't have any blue pipe at the time, um, so the, the, the white, very thin pipe will be replaced. That was just a temporary measure to get a cover over it. Uh, the only step remaining now is to effectively do what I've done on that one and just really chuck some debris or scaffold nesting, whatever you want to call it, over the top uh, and peg it down in the corners. I'll bring you back when that's done. And there you go. Um, that's a quick, simple, straightforward, anybody can do it, um, uh, way to protect your brassicas. Uh, I mean, there's over 30 brassicas in that that particular tunnel there. A total time for me to cut the hoops, put on the uh, uh, supports, cover it with netting and pin it all down. Less than half an hour. Um, the um, hosing I'm using, the tubing I'm using, that was comparatively expensive to what I normally pay. Um, the local places were all out and I didn't want to wait a week for it to be delivered. So I, I took what they had in stock, which was a 25 meter roll instead of my usual 50 meter roll. And it was 32 millimeter pipe. Um, you don't need to get 32 millimeter pipe. It's massively overkill and actually quite difficult to cut. So I'd suggest the 25 or even the 20 would be more than sufficient. Um, if you've got some canes, knocking around they'd probably do just as well and you could tie them on rather than screwing them on um, uh, so I mean if you were to get the 25 millimeter pipe uh, on a 50 meter roll those four hoops are about 12 meters so you'd get you get four beds worth out of a, out of a, a 50 meter roll which is about 30 quid so you're looking about £7.50 for that. Um, the uh, debris netting uh, is about £30 for a 50 metre roll, um, so that, that's a, a 15 foot bed, so you'll, you'll get an awful lot of those. Um, 
over 10. So if, if you allow for the overlap, maybe 10, should we say 10 uh, from a 30 million so that's three pounds. So that's 10 pounds is what it costs to protect your brassicas. I'll take you down to the, um, the older ones and show you what it does and how it affects your crop. And here we have one of the, uh, the beds I made earlier in the year, as you can see. You know, I'm going to take that, that broccoli head in a moment. You know, it's protected that plant. The only problem, you'll see that there's, there's not a mark on it. it. It's as clean as a whistle inside there. If we have a look around here, there's another head just here that I'll take. You know, um, these ones in these, these earlier beds were planted a bit closer together. They were planted at 12 inch centres, which tends to lead to smaller heads. They push each other out, so I, I probably would stick to um, 18 inch separations and 15 inch um, uh, separations by uh, if, if you want maximum head size. Um, if you plant them close together, typically you'll just get smaller heads. Um, I'll just take you over here as well and have a look at some of the others on the way past. You can see after the first cut, we've already got some sproutings back up, so I'll be taking those as well. And um, we look, uh, I can't remember where they've gone. Oh, there we are. You can see now, there you go, Romanesco cauliflower heads. The other main collies will be a bit behind. Typically, it goes Calabrese. Romanesco, then cauliflower in that order, taking a, a week or two date, two weeks between each each type because they take slightly longer. Yeah, so that will be the next harvest. I've got about 20, 25 of those. But as you can see, all of these plants are in superb condition, and that's what that's what protecting it with this debris netting does. Now, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Some people do stitch up these holes here. Um, Generally, I don't worry about that too much because the butterflies are only really becoming active now and these are a temptation for them. Um, the much smaller ones that we've just planted won't be a temptation to them so they won't bother to try and crawl through there and if you do it's very infrequent and you, you can pick it off and generally it's one plant that's affected. Um, but yeah, so generally I don't bother too much to, to worry about them because... Um, I don't generally have too many issues, and being a, a large open site, we uh, there's usually some other uh, poor schmuck that hasn't protected their their brassicas that they go after instead of mine. <laughs> so I'm generally okay. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's how I protect my my brassicas from uh, both uh, pigeons um, and butterflies and anything else really that tries to eat it that's not me. Um, and I'll I'll see you again on the next one.